Hi, XR just sent in a few of their highest capacity batteries for me to take a look. These two are their 26650 6Ah batteries, and these two are their 21700 6Ah batteries. All these 6Ah batteries can sustain a maximum discharge current of 10 amps. In this video, we're going to do a couple of different things. First, I'm going to do some testing of these batteries, and then I will do a teardown of this VX4 charger that I reviewed a few weeks back. I didn't open it up because I had done a teardown with another XTAR charger before, and that one is the VC8S. I thought they would be similar, so I didn't bother open this one up, but there were some viewers wanting me to do a teardown, so I will do that later in this video. And before I get to these 6 amp hours batteries, I also received a few more of these AA 1.5 volts lithium ion rechargeable batteries from XTAR. As I explained in one of my earlier videos, these batteries are essentially consist of a shortened lithium ion cell at the bottom here, and with some DC to DC converter circuitry on the top. Anyway, I did a full charging and discharging cycle earlier, and you can see that the measure capacities all exceeded the specified 2500 mAh number. I will be using these batteries for different applications for a while, and probably will do a separate video on the pros and cons of these 1.5V lithium ion batteries. Anyway, back to these 6 amp hours batteries we have here. Earlier, I had charged them up and did a capacity test. As you can see here, these batteries all exceeded their specified 6 amp hours capacity. Curiously, volume-wise, the 26650 cell is 42% larger than the 21700, so in theory, they would be able to produce even higher capacity cells than these 6 amp hours ones, given the same manufacturing process. 42% higher capacity would roughly equate to an 8.5 amp hours battery. So I would be curious to see if XTAR is going to release even higher capacity 26650 cells in the future. Because they are rated to have a maximum continuous discharge rate of 10 amps, let's actually verify that with an electronic load, and we'll also check out the thermal situation. I actually don't have any dedicated battery holders for these cells, so I'm using charger to hold the batteries here, so the battery charger is actually not powered. So ignore that part. The electronic load I'm going to use here is this Miniware MDPL1060, and the 10 amps discharging current is just the upper limit, so we should have no problem with that, with this electronic load. And of course, we're using this meter to monitor the terminal voltage of the battery. All right, so let me turn on the electronic load. Currently, I set the current to 1 amp, so you can see that it's fairly modest, but let's get started. And I'm going to increase it to 5 amps. So you can see right now we're at roughly 5 amps, and the terminal voltage dropped to 3.8 volts. Let me let it run for a minute, and I'm going to crank it up all the way to 10 amps. So let's just do all the way up to 10 amps. As you can see, the current is now at 10 amps, and the voltage dropped to 3.5 volts. But let's let it run for a few minutes, and we'll take a look at the thermal situation here. Now, I had let it run for about 8 minutes now. Let's take a look at the thermal situation here. And remember, the discharging rate is at 10 amps. So let's see here. And you can see the battery did heat up quite a bit. Right now, it's at 51 degrees Celsius. Now, it is warm, but it's nothing too much to cause concern. So, it feels a little bit warm to the touch, and I think it should be fine at this discharge rate, given that we're at 10 amps. So, I think what I'm going to do next is to test the discharge with this 26650 cell with 10 amps. Now, this cell should run a little bit cooler, in my opinion, because this is physically much larger. So, let's give it a go. All right. I just hook up the battery, and we'll go straight with 10 amps. And you can see right now we're discharging at 10 amps. So let's wait for a few minutes. All right, the discharging has been going on for about 10 minutes now at 10 amps. So let's take a look at the thermal profile here. And as expected, you can see this 26650 cell runs a lot cooler than the 21700, just because it's much bigger here. So right now, we're at about 49 degrees Celsius. So indeed, both of these batteries can be discharged at this high discharge rate continuously. All these batteries, including the 1.5 volts lithium-ion ones, lithium-ion phosphate, nickel-metal hydride, nickel-cadmium batteries, can be charged with the VX4 charger. 
which makes this charger very versatile. So let me open it up and take a look inside to see what we got. By the look of it, it's using a two-board design. One is up here, the other one is tucked underneath. So we'll have to remove this board a little bit later. And here we can see the board was made just back in May, a few months ago. On this top board, at least on this side, there's not too much going on. You have two of these 393 comparators and a microcontroller. Now, the microcontroller, unfortunately, the marking has been etched up. So we don't know exactly which microcontroller they're using here. Let me try to remove this board. And by the way, the spring mechanism here is exactly the same as the other XCAR battery charger we had reviewed before. Okay, as you can see here, the board down there is just the LCD driver. We have two of these HT1621Bs. These are the standard LCD driver chips. And we have another microcontroller that has the marking etched off here. But that one is used to drive the LCD for sure. And now let me flip over the main board here. On the main component side, you can see we essentially have four sections of similar circuitry. That's because we have four channels. And each one has this 09N03S MOSFET. That's an N-channel MOSFET, has a maximum 30 amps drain to source current. And here is a close-up. You can see within each section, we have this 100 microhenry inductor and a electrolytic capacitor. And here we also have a chip. The chip marking is BD2L00, not entirely sure what that is. It's probably some sort of op-amp, if I have to guess. And I'm guessing that during the discharge, this op-amp would be essentially detecting the voltage across the battery and therefore controlling the current flowing through. Of course, the current sensing resistor would be on the other side. And you can see these R750, the 750 milliohm resistors, are essentially the current sensing resistors. Overall, the construction is excellent. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.